So today I'm on a short pilgrimage. Behind me is the Grand Hotel where Molly used to work in the 1910s uh, and where she returns to briefly in 2018 to try and get some old memories back. So the entrance you just saw was the one that Sir Teddy had to take uh, with a wheelchair. And then I'm walking around the corner um, to the entrance with the steps which unfortunately is partially clouded, uh, shrouded, should I say, uh, because there's work going on. But I'll turn around in a second as I get there. So this, behind me are the steps that, that Molly uses, uh, that obviously Sir Teddy cannot. So I'm gonna follow the walk that Molly does. I'm currently walking along the Lees, shortly, shortly I shall be walking through the Crescent, and I'm gonna follow her route to the memorial on Tontine Street, past the house where um, uh, her husband used to live. After walking from the Lees, the story describes Molly walking onto the Crescent, uh, which is what I'm approaching now. It seemed like a good idea to walk the route because I'm still got the final draft of still life to do so i can add some maybe some detail about what she walks past the things she would have looked at without all the scaffolding it's it's not on the season they're getting all the repair work done now it's february as i film this after clifton crescent i continued down the lees and towards the end there's a segment called road of remembrance or something like that and there are a lot of poppies attached to the fence. Now, given the time zone that Molly comes from, um, I think I'm going to add a little moment where she asks what the poppies are for. Um, and obviously it's for people that died in the war that was going on when, when she vanished from, you know, 19, whatever it was, 19, the 1910s. I'm trying to remember which, I need to go back to the manuscript. I think she disappears in 1916 or 1917 or even 1915 but um yeah so i'm gonna have a look at the the poppies now get some information and maybe just add that little moment uh to the book one thing i'm really finding <clears throat> by doing this walk is that you really don't get a sense of um, height when you're doing this so I would have had the characters walking straight out of the hotel onto the beach. Uh, and actually, there's quite a big cliff in the way. So, hey, hey. <laughs> I have had to take a bit of a detour because the road of remembrance, which goes down towards sea level, which is the route Molly would have taken, I doubt it was called road of remembrance in her day, obviously, but uh, there'd have been a path or something. But anyway, in the book, that's the road she would have taken, but I can't because it's closed, the road's closed and even the uh, footpath is closed. So I'm now zigzagging through the town to try and get back to where I want to be on Harbour Street. So I'm walking down this not very nice flight of steps. This is all a bit bleh, to be honest, and yuck. But it gets me onto hopefully what is Harbour Street, which was the next place that Molly went on her walk after she came off the Lees in the Road of Remembrance. Just gotta try and find it now. Yeah, that over there is where she would have come down. So this, I'm gonna continue down, is Harbour Street. And this is where Harbour Street becomes Tontine Street. And there is a moment where Molly remarks on, I can't remember if she remarks out loud or in her head, but she remarks on the colourfulness of all the buildings and how weird and unlike her time. So she recognises the buildings but not all the colours. Hopefully that's true. <laughs> Thank you. 
Molly stood up. Her eyes had caught something that interested her on the other side of the road. She stepped out just as a car shot past, making her jump. Saywood pulled her back by the hand, but Molly shook her off, looked out at the road, and when it was safe, she crossed over. On the other side was a small garden where her memory was telling her that there ought to be a shop. There was an iron fence that ended with a small wooden gate, and beyond that, the area was paved. There was a single wooden table in the middle with a bench on each side. Right in front of the fence was a small sign that had some flowers on it. This was what had caught her attention. It bore the following words. This tablet marks the place where on May the 25th, 1917, a bomb was dropped from a German aeroplane, killing 60 persons and injuring many others. Molly stood in front of it with her hands over her mouth. These used to be Stokes Brothers greengrocers, she said. My mother used to work here. So Teddy had managed to get safely across the road with Saywood. She was no longer working here in 1917, Molly. She turned to drink after you vanished and they let her go a few months later. She was not here when the bomb fell. What about Ernest? Ernest was the son of one of the brothers that owned the shop. She did not know him well but had chatted with him on several occasions when her mum had gone to work. He had been 12 then. So Teddy squeezed her hand. He died in the blast, Molly, and so did his father William. William's brother Fred died the following year from his injuries. He shook his head. I was on an errand for my mother and my father was in a public house somewhere, so none of us were nearby when it happened, thankfully. The windows of our house were all destroyed and we were told that if we had been at home near the windows, we would not have survived either. Molly wiped her eyes with her sleeves. I can't believe it's gone. She cried openly and Sir Teddy held her hand.